Well, good day to you. Uh, the mailman cometh, and he bring be bringing yeah whatever. Anyway, he brought me some boxes. He's gonna have some flowery speech. <laughs> I sent this person my uh, email or my mail address, and just for fun, I wrote super genius like Wiley e. Coyote, and they added the expletive ha. <laughs> well, let's see what we got. Something good, I hope. Carefully open it. Um, my unboxings aren't unboxings for the sake of showing you that I got something in the mail and I unboxed it. Uh, they're more of uh, cover your butt. And it's a tiny little box. And it's got a lot of packing peanuts. Oh, it's a little radio. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh. Yeah. My chance to give somebody hell about not packing something well just went down the spout. Oh, it's in there. Okay. And there's a lot of... Hopefully that... It's kind of weird bubble wrap. It's really... It's kind of like flat tire bubble wrap. Okay. Uh, what this is, is... For those of you who frequent my channel, <coughs> you probably watch Tom's Radio Room. <coughs> if you don't, He's pretty good egg. Um, you need to pop over there. He does reviews on radios. He puts a lot of time into his uh, reviews. And I believe, if I remember correctly, this was a radio he got off of eBay. And he got it, and it uh, it was a dud. It doesn't look like it's used very much. I believe he probably even mentioned that. The fit and feel is pretty nice. Oh, he already did a review. Never mind. Anyway, the but none of the buttons seemed to work on the thing, and he was going to take it apart, and he, I don't remember, he said something about not taking it apart. Anyway, he boxed it up, sent it to me, so we can destroy it on air. Oh, boy. You know, I wonder what I got. I could, I probably need some special tools to open that with. I can't think of anything right off the bat. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> I've got a hammer we can use on that baby. I think just a a slight blow on the edge might get it. <laughs> no, we'll try and take it apart proper. It's a kind of a cute little radio. It's very nice. And he wrapped it all up and spent a whopping <clears throat> three bucks to get it here from. Florida did a through the US postal system. I just just brought it in just literally two minutes ago. I heard uh, kind of some rattling around on the front porch and the uh, post postal guy was all bundled up trying to drop it off with a couple other boxes. And he, yeah, he really taped that baby up. And he foolishly left his return address on there. That box would be about the right size for some rather nasty customers, wouldn't it? If anybody's got an idea what I had to mail back to it, let me know. Well, so there are batteries in this baby? Mm, probably not. It would save a little bit on weight. And oh. You know what's going to happen is he went to all the trouble to wrap this up and send it to me, and it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some batteries. I'll be back. Okie dokie. So, looks like we just popped this little cover off. It's kind of a nice little radio. It's a nice size. I think he paid about $20 for this. Yeah. So, looks like the battery's going this way. Well, there was a little static noise when it powered on, and the clock, oh, no, it's gone mad. I think he...
Now well, it appears that none of the buttons other than the volume control work on the thing. It looks like it's just stuck on and it was kind of running. This is the clock and it's kind of weird because store ban scan. Oh, I see it's got a door on it and it covers the controls up, but leaves the speaker out. There's the setup for the US skip standard on FM. Okay. Well, we can actually, there's a little tiny hole right there. Mm, here's what you do with old capacitors. Let's give her a little reset. And yeah, it's just it's just plunking away, running. Maybe it's a stopwatch, and the power won't turn off. I don't know how you tune this thing. Store timer, sleep, channel up. It appears to be totally broke. Okay, well, it looks like right off the bat. But there are two screws there. So, let's see here. Go to taking this stuff apart. Make sure you have something to keep the screws in. This is just an old pill bottle. Uh, probably my psych medicine was in there or something. No, that's not true. This is a. Uh, <clears throat> Apparently a number zero. Oh, well, you may want to check those screws. Make sure you get the you really yeah the number one screw fits better. I have a, try to always start with a bigger screwdriver to work my way down. I can't remember if Tom said if he took this apart or not. No. So we'll take the batteries out so that when the radio comes apart, we don't have a little surprise. Hmm. There's kind of a rubber bumper along both sides here. Tom was afraid that when he took the thing apart, it would break. And that appears to be a genuine concern. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down and just take it easy. And they, what they've done here is they put this sticker over the seam. This is a giveaway. It's kind of a you broke the seal, you bought it type thing. I'm just going to look at this real carefully. I'm going to go sit down and kind of take a look at this. We'll put the battery door in there. Seal that baby up. <clears throat> so I want to come up with some revolutionary... Uh, how to disassemble this. We'll get back to you. We'll just give her a quick scan here. I could throw it on the floor rather quickly. That's always a good laugh. <laughs> and that has happened before. <laughs> I think it was a old wireless phone I was trying to take apart and I knocked it over and I had the screws out of it and just popped open. Hey, once in a while you luck out. I'll be back. Take it easy. Okay, one of the first things I noticed about Tom's little radio here is this side seemed to kind of hook, so I, I parted it, and this rubber looks like it's peeling out now. It's just tucked in a little kind of a beauty ring there, and I bet this other side does the same thing. All I'm going to do is take this screwdriver and hook it, and pull it back a little bit until it starts to pop out, and we just rip that baby out. Okay, just throw that over there. Now you can see the hooks. There's three of them on each side. And it looks like we can just part the thing. Not sure how to part that last one. It looks a little bit suspicious. Mm, I'm going to work on the other side here a little bit.
And of course, while I was busy working on it, it snapped back together. There it goes. It's just slowly popping apart. As long as you're not too rough with this stuff, most of the time you can get it apart. Now it looks like I've got one side and I've got the other side to work on. Again, there's these little catches in here and I'm just going to reach in there real carefully. Let's see if I can pop that apart real carefully. It's trying up. There it goes. See, the really great thing about this is if I screw this up and break it, I'm not going to tell Tom I ever got the thing. Oh, I never appeared, Tom. I don't know what ever happened to it. <laughs> just slowly wiggle this apart. Now I did see uh, there's like a little cover for a switch here which I'm going to liberate off of there. If you don't get in a big hurry on this stuff, you just slowly work your way around and gradually look at it. Yeah, probably 99% of the time nothing bad will happen. Now, I may have to cut the seal. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can flip that seal out of the way. Now we're getting there. You can see the guts of the thing. Looks like it's two circuit boards. Let me kind of peek in there and see how they're set in there. This side has the, looks like all just standard through hole mounting. I'm not sure why this won't come apart. There it goes. I just slowly twisted the case and it just snapped open. Yeah, it's got, hmm. Oh, okay. There we go. So this has a tiny little speaker. Looks like this is probably all the display. And then there's a little cable and this is the audio and that's probably just a power lead. Actually it looks like a ground. Down here are the guts of the radio. There's a little loop stick. Here's the Antenna. Oh, that's kind of annoying. I don't have to watch that. This one of these holes here actually goes through and holds the rod antenna. It's got a little jumper wire there, so it holds it in there. And here you can see the little fingers. Well, I don't see anything right off the bat that would stop this from working. looks like at least this circuit board is held in with some tiny little screws like right there 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 and there's one tucked up under there this is all surface mount except for a few discrete components hmm. weird it actually says high voltage I'm, I'm not kidding you. Right. See it there? High voltage. It says. It looks like it says AGC high voltage oscillator. Weird. Mm, well, there's at least one screw there. I don't see anything right off the bat that looks like it might be a source of trouble. Just kind of looking the thing over to see if there's any damaged components or anything obviously broken loose. One thing that does catch my eye is it's got this little umbilical cable that's pushed in here. I think I might take that loose and wipe it with some cleaner real careful. 
Let's do that. Well, what I've done here is I went and got a Q-tip and I just saturated it with some Deox, the D5 cleaner. And I'm just going to wipe it away from the contacts there. I don't really see anything, any dirt on there, but it's worth a try. I find it a little bit odd that all the buttons seem to be screwed up, so I'm, I'm assuming that something in the control circuitry is jacked on this thing. And, you know, worst comes to worst, Tom has a speaker the size of a dime, or maybe a half dollar. Where is it? Does it say high voltage oscillator? I don't... Oh, maybe it's some high voltage for the... Uh, Oh, maybe it's an up. Maybe, maybe their idea of high voltage is an up converter for the rest of the power and the rest of the unit. Yeah, what a blustery day. Hmm. There's a lot of capacitors on this baby, just through hole. There's a ceramic filter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This thing's got the same number, of, actually it's got more capacitors in it than my FRG. It's kind of interesting. Now, let's see if we can fit that back in there. Let's see. Hang on, I tick calculations right now. Let's see here. This would work. We'll just tip it up about 90 degrees and see if we can slide it back and all the way back in there. Okay. So we'll switch. We'll just comb that switch out of the way. really not a lot to go wrong with these. I bet if it uh, comes time to warranty it, they just rip one out of the packaging and give it to you. I don't know what that was. That's the switch cover. Okay, so here's the battery cover. If we're living right, we can just slide this all in here and kind of close the door on it, and it should take off. Trying to see if there was a way to take that door off without a fight. It... Okay. There's a clip on there, and then there's a zigzag contact right here. And then there's a tiny little compartment to hide your stash in. the radio kind of power out. No, still running. It's not good. Well, I suppose the other possibility is that one of these buttons could be stuck. Okay, I'll just pop that apart. Well, Failure number one. Hmm. Let's see here. I suppose lurking under here, we'll just take that umbilical cable off again. And let's see here. Well, we'll zoom me in a little bit here, maybe that'll help you. Let's see, it looks like there's a number. There's some white gunk right there. Whatever this is, is a shield over it and it's sealed up. Actually the solder gun, some of this is not very good. There's some other white crud right there. Almost like there was something splashed in the thing. Hmm, that's a thought. And it is up here and there's some buttons. Oh, let's try this. Let's see here.
This is just some alcohol. Yeah, we're just gonna try and wipe all that crap away. I don't know what it is. There's a little bit down there too. Okay. Well, what do you suppose our chances are that that was just some gunk on there and it was screwing the thing up? <clears throat> we can try it. I actually don't believe it'll fix it. I'm kind of surprised that the thing turns on when you plug the batteries in. It doesn't surprise me, but it is a little bit odd. <clears throat> I think Tom got this used, if I remember him telling me that's right. Oop, how about we put the battery in right? Well, we could put it in wrong and see what happens. I don't think Tom would mind. Well, it didn't turn on this time. I've got the batteries in there right, so let's see. What is the standby power on? Oh, can you believe that? I think I fixed it. All right, way to go, I think. Before you get too excited. Darn it. Well, I fixed the power now on power. Again, but now <clears throat> something's going on. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, I bet I know what happened. Okay, I didn't. Ah, false hope. Rats. Okay, well. Okay, so that did not fix it as much as I had hoped it would. Well, so hmm. and look, up, 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 up. there's actually a little piece of solder. It's not where it belongs. Well, I'm going to let you go here. What I'm going to do is get out my magnifying glass and just go over this and see if I see anything out of place. I, apparently, this must have worked at one time. Otherwise, they hopefully wouldn't have let it out of the factory. We'll see what happens. I'll be back. This is incredibly touchy. Watch this. I'm just touching this. So I think the switch is I think what might be Yeah, there's something wrong on the air. Yeah. I think what the problem is is that uh the switch is stuck down and there's something going on in there. One thing I did notice is there's some sort of a kind of a foam tucked up under there. It's probably to keep the switches from getting dirty. But I got a feeling I'm just barely touching this. Now here, this one you can actually hear it click. This one, you never even hear the thing click. So there's something going on in there. I need to explore that a little bit more. Okay. Here's what's going on, I believe. This little row here is all the buttons. These are little dome or snap buttons. Um, if you look at them, they all seem to be in a row until you get to here. If you match up 
that switch I was fiddling with, it actually has, looks like two contacts, that's these little dimples. And that equates to these two here. Maybe they figure that that is going to, like, take a beating or have more. But you can see that it's out of position. Now, this may just be a piece of tape that I can pull back very carefully. And since I'm only going to pull back one button, it may not be a big issue. The other thing I notice is when I tighten the face, it's starting to act up a little bit more. There's uh, four screws on there. When I started to torque the face down, it started acting up. This may have been this way from the factory and just started acting up. I have a feeling that the original owner probably had trouble with this and couldn't return it. Or maybe they bought it used and just somebody got stuck with it. So I'm going to see if I can pull this tape up. Let me go get some tools here. Okay, so we need a little razor blade. I'm just going to try and pick that membrane off of there and see if I can reposition it. Here's that, that foam sheet that was back there and it's just, I don't know what it's made out of. Something very fiddling. very carefully to pick this sheet. There's actually a through hole there and to pull it back. <clears throat> Let's see if we can just pick this back. And I'm hoping that this first button stays stuck on this membrane. Yep. Okay, that's what's going on. So what we need to do is reposition that button back in there. Man, is that baby tiny. It's a little dome, like a little baby hubcap. This probably is positioned on the sheet by machines and then just ripped off and stuck down there. I'm going to say we got that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut you off here because I need to kind of concentrate to bolt this all back together. It's very fiddly.
There's some very tiny screws to hold this all together. I think this foam is actually, the buttons are laid in there and then the foam is laid on there to keep them positioned while you're assembling the circuit board. Hopefully this will take off and run. This has been a really fun little repair. It's a lot of fun kind of exploring this stuff. Tempt fate and solder the speaker back on before I test this. Actually, it was soldered on. Never mind. There, I did it so quick that you noticed. <laughs> Something must be working right because the display has actually remained charged up. It has kind of just some dashed lines and it's still there. Well, the $60 question is do I snap this back together and really tempt fate or that's something I'm going to need to work on a little bit, that screw in the back. way would be the good way. Okay, so what do we got here? So we'll just hit the reset button. Okay. Well, the band switch appears to work. Let me turn it off. It's something I can't figure out what the deal is there. You might need to read the book. Well, the clock is setting. Oh, okay. So the thing won't work until you set the clock. That's slightly annoying. I'm going to say it's fixed. I'm going to shut the batteries out of the thing and take her for a little test spin. Hope I don't like this. Tom will never get it back. Now I'm just teasing. Let's see. There is a little tiny switch. I'm only down to three parts here. There's a very small switch on the top. Sits in there. Makes you appreciate the people that assemble this stuff for a living. It's very tiny and very fiddly. Sorry about that. I got to daydream in there. Okay, I think we're ready to close her back up. I'm just going to shut the door on it and just. Well, I was going to just shut the door on it. Let me just slip that. There's a little baby circuit board there. And it has the... Hmm. How does that go together? Hopefully that goes like that. Slowly closing the thing up here. That rubber all sneak back in there off camera. Okay. So batteries in the right way.
Well, the radio came on. So we want the timer. I'm just going to set the clock to some arbitrary thing. Not sure how this band part works. Well, it looks like it moves pretty damn quick. I think this is up and running here. I'm going to call it good. It looks like it speeds up as it goes further on. This is a cute little radio. I think Tom's going to be excited to have it fixed. I can hear WWV. Okay, well, I'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and screw the case back together. And that, that screw in there is going to be a bit of a bugaboo. I can already see it's not going to cooperate. I'm going to do the easy one first. Let's see here. Just drop that baby in there. This is kind of off to the side, so I'm hoping that it will catch it and go through. Yep, all right. Like a million dollars. These little rubber, they look like little leeches, actually. I don't know what the, are they the same? They look different a tiny bit. I don't think it really matters. We just kind of wiggle them back in place there. They probably snap those in when the case is in there. Actually, what I'm going to do is get both ends started and s kind of smush that down. It's more of just an annoyance than anything. It's not going in there too bad. Oh, I see. It actually is textured that way. It has. I'm trying to smooth out something that's already a lump. <laughs> okay, just same thing. I'm just going to stick one side in, and it's just tapered there. I'm just working that in there and getting it all the way in there, and then do the other end. Just kind of meet up in the middle there. Okay. We're ready. The clock appears to be running. So it looks like you hold that timer and punch the buttons. Um. Oh, here, let's do that. I don't know about this. I don't know if this actually searches or what this does. There's a scan.
not sure what this. I'm not sure what some of these functions are. Seems like it catches the channels going down better. Oh, it's in the scan mode. Okay. This must just be a rough tuning mode. I don't know, I need to read the instructions. But when it's in the scan mode... These legends mean that Tom probably kept a hold of the instructions. Timer. No, it can turn on and off here and stuff. I don't know. So, in essence, it is fixed. I think as long as it turns on and receives something, Tom's going to be tickled. If the, some of the functions don't work, I don't think he'll be too upset. He probably wants to review this for his radio show. I kind of screwed up there and got that caught underneath. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. Apparently, whatever mode you leave it in when you turn it off, it stays there. Yeah, how far this thing goes. It's 14 megahertz, 15, 16, 17. Sorry, I've got the lights off here. Goes to thirty. Yeah, two to thirty. Well, there's the scanning. If I was really mean, I'd do a review of it, and then Tom would be kind of stuck. Okay, well I guess we're done. So I'll send him a little email, let him know that uh, we're done. I'll have to figure out, maybe I need to pack that thing a little bit better. But I don't think shipping damaged that thing. I honestly think that that thing was broke from the factory. What may have also happened too is it may have got stored somewhere hot and the glue melted and let that button move. It's a cute little radio. Way too long. You to give them. Looks like we're running. Maybe I'll set the clock, make sure it runs correctly. What is it? Uh, twenty twenty one. I suppose this doesn't do UTC time. Oh, it does. Or uh, military time. And I got it backwards. It was. It's twenty. 21, not uh, 2120. It's the thought that counts. God. Maybe I should busy uh, learn how to walk and chew gum here. There we go. Well, now it's 22. Now that I've screwed around long enough. Okay, there we go. Well, that was fun. Thanks for sending it, Tom. We'll uh, figure out how to get it back to you in one piece. <laughs> Take it easy. Have a great day.